So, as Nina said, um, that's the title. I'll be talking about climate of the common era. And actually, I should mention that I'm just standing here. The work has been done by a large consortium. We had mentioned um, we do coordination work. Um, that is a prime example um, of how so coordination went uh, well and successful. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit about that as well. OK, so talk, we talk about climate of the common era. And this is the common era. Uh, year 1 to 2013 uh, used to be uh, under Domini, uh, but common era is now much better if, especially if you look at a global scale where um, non Christian regions are also involved. So this is the common era, and this is its instrument based temperature record. So it, depending on how brave you are, you can extend it into the mid 19th century. But well, that's all we have. So it's impressive from its amplitude, but not impressive, impressive from, its, from its reach. So if you look at the same data just um, over this, um, over, over the whole spread, over the whole range from the 19th century uh, to today, um, we see this increase in temperature. I mean, uh, you've, you've, all, you've all seen this a million times. Um, but that's global average. It's, it's interesting if you want to, to, to do budgets, energy budgets and things like that. But if you look into uh, more detail, uh, as is done in, in this figure here, again, the, the time axis from 1880 to 2010. But now here, um, there's, a, there's a latitudinal transect, if you want, um, from, from the north to the south, and the colors indicate the the warmth at any particular latitudinal band. And there you see that, um, well, uh, the global average is, is just an average. Actually, there's a lot of variability um, um, regionally or latitudinally in this case, like um, in the high northern latitudes, much more warming than there are zones where there's only moderate um, temperature change. Uh, in the northern hemisphere, there's, there's, there's more, sees more um, temperature change than the southern hemisphere and things like that. And this point about looking at the regional scale uh, is also emphasized if you look at a, at a map here, uh, spatial temperature variability from 2000, the, the, the last decades compared to uh, 1950s to 80s uh, to 80. Um, there's a lot of heterogeneity um, on, on this map. There's even some, some coolings in, in, in places. So um, if someone finds um, cooling in one place, it doesn't mean that global warming isn't happening. And uh, uh, at the same time, if we know that the globe is warming, it doesn't mean that every place on the planet warms. So we need, if we want to have a meaningful record, we, we should go into more detail. And it's great that I see Carrie Crumley here, um, because I have this slide from, from I Hope. That's from the science plan um, of I Hope, which used to, to be here in, in rooted in, in Stockholm. So many of you might know about it. Um, it was a very, still is, a very ambitious project trying to combine the history of, of people um, with the history of environment, of climatic change, all, all, the, all, the, um, all the interactions and try the, I think I hope want, wants to understand the interaction systematically, um, not just in a de deterministic way. So the idea is to, to collect all sorts of climatic data. I mean, I don't want to, you to, 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 to understand the graph, but it, it kind of <laughs> illustrates the complexity of, of the whole uh, problem. And if you want to, to understand societal changes, and uh, then we need to have a much better environmental um, records to compare them with than what we currently use. There are a few examples how, how climate society inter interactions are, are often um, de depicted. That's the almost classic example by now from how it all published in science, of course, because it's an interesting subject. But um, so there's one record from Cariaco Basin of Venezuela, and it, it, it shows that there, there were possibly droughts 
and this is related to, to, to Maya collapses. Um, a similar way um, of, of looking at, at Chinese dynasties was, was done here from a, from a lake from lake sediments in southern China. So these are both lake records and here in, in colors are, are the, the Chinese dynasties and the point was made that um, the lake records show that there's this drought um, here and there and that drought uh, induces a change in, in, in dynasty. Basically uprisings of people. And, um, okay, again, a very simple um, comparison of climate and its impact on, on societies. And the final example, a recent um, climate record from, from Central Europe based on tree rings, so a, a precipitation record and a, and, a, and a temperature record again, where then people plot the, the history um, of Europe against the climate record and make inferences um, on a, on a, at a very simple level. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, these, these things are published in, 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 in high-profile journals, but um, we, should do, be, we should be able to do better, certainly from the climate environment, uh, environment side. And that's what we want to do. That's why we established this Pages 2K network. <coughs> it's, a, it's a network of nine groups uh, working groups in, in, in pages. We, we coordinate them, we orchestrate them. Um, although actually we leave them a lot, of, uh, a lot of freedom. You can see that somehow already. You know, we have acronyms, yes, but you know, they, they all, they all well, many of them are very in individual. Um, so it, it does reflect the level of, of, of freedom that each individual group does have. And many people involved, and this is now just the author list of a recent paper. And that's an intermediate product, so the project is ongoing, so we're not finished, there's most to come, but um, there's most of what I'm showing is based on, on this paper. So this is a, a, an author list. And actually, there are even more people somehow involved in, in, in work, workshops, and so this is kind of the core group. The objectives of this whole network would be to compile data, to quality, to quality control the data, to reconstruct the regional climate, temperature, precipitation, maybe even pressure fields, compare the data with models and then analyze climate in regions and, 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 and globally. And there are some scientific goals. Um, discern the main <coughs> modes of climate variability on subdecadal to, to orbital, longer, multi 10,000 years time scales determine the relation between climate variability and climate forcing, which includes also the question um, how, much, uh, how, how strong is the human component to climate change today, and um, evaluate the regional expression of global change. So how do we do this, usually? Um, ah, here we go. Um, the groups, the regional groups compiled Data. It was not much. Not, it, was, it was not uh, intended that people do field work and, and generate data. It was just intended to, that people could use the data that are already out there. So it's really adding value to the data that are produced already anyway. So in a way, it's a relatively cheap project for quite a, quite a good output, I think. So all the all the groups um, screened what they found were the best data in, in, in their region. And we relied on the, the regional expertise, um, what is best. Obviously, in Antarctica, ice cores um, make 100%. Um, in South America, there's, there's a more variety. There's um, tree rings and instrumental data and ice cores and lake sediments and so on. And some groups found that, that tree rings only are the best um, source of information. Others um, made use of the variety of, of archives that are available. In total, in, the, in this paper, for, for all these regions, um, we used 511 records. Africa, as also a result, has basically only one record, Lake uh, Tanganyika here, that, is, that would be good enough as a temperature record. So, um, more work to be done in Africa. 
if you want the temperature reconstruction for, for there. So how do, we, how do we do this in general? How do we get temperatures from times long past? Okay, not very good. Anyway, that's a tree. Someone trying, uh, coring um, the, the, the trunk of the tree and then getting a little, a little sample, a long thin um, wood sample that show the, 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 the tree rings. Probably you know that, that the tree rings grow thicker uh, if conditions are, are favorable and, and they're thinner if they are unfavorable. Ice core is another prominent example. So if you go to, here to, 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 to Antarctica or to, to Greenland or to high altitude glaciers, drill, drill ice. Um, get these, these ice cores again, um, long and thin samples. Um, and if you're lucky, then you, you have annual layering um, that gives you very good uh, time control. Or in the tropics, more popular are corals. Again, you, you have to dive drill corals. Um, get an elongated sample again. And, oops, okay. Uh, one doesn't see that, but it doesn't matter. So again, uh, often you have annual banding in the corals, so very good archive. And they all, all these archives, they carry some signal that needs to be, they can be interpreted in terms of environmental change. Well, for example, the corals often they incorporate um, trace metals in a particular relationship um, with, with calcium, depending on the temperature. The tree rings, it's, it's a, it's a, for the tree rings, it's a, the, the ring width um, or the, the wood density. For, for ice, it's the oxygen isotope um, signature of, of, of the ice. Um, and here we have a, we have a lake. Um, so you can go out onto the lake. That's, that is Derek Kaufman, so I should mention him because he's one of the, the major drivers um, of, of this whole initiative. Yeah, you spend some time at the lake, you install a drilling uh, facility, and then again you get these long thin samples. Um, and this would be, if you cut them open, that would be the mud from the bottom of the lake. Again, with, you see the, the layering, and so if you're lucky, they are annual layers. And then you can, you can measure something, like just some, some geochemical signal, or, um, or look at the, the composition of, of um, microfossils and figure out the temperature. Okay. Good. So that's, these data have been put together by all the, these regional groups. And these are the results. These are seven, seven temperature records, um, one for each region. Here's the, the, the time scale again from zero to 2,000 years. So we see several things. Um, one is that not all regions succeeded in, 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 in producing a, a reliable temperature reconstruction all the way uh, back to 2,000 years. Again, so it was up to, to the individual groups um, to deliver what they think they can justify. We have 2,000 years from the Arctic, from Europe, and almost from, from Antarctica, but other regions um, stopped earlier than that. Again, um, the, the, the kind of archives that are used are, are, very, are very different. Also, actually, the statistical methods. So, um, it was up to the groups to, to, to um, apply whatever statistics they thought uh, would work best. That results in a relatively heterogeneous um, data set. And of course, yeah, sometimes you, you would like to, to, to have things comparable directly. So it can be considered the heter heterogeneity, could be considered weakness. But on the other hand, um, if you find common signals in these heterogeneous records, uh, you, can't, you, can't, you can't blame a systematic uh, bias. So you can look at the, um, positively at the, at the diversity of, of the approaches. Okay, let's give that. Yeah, 
So, and, and you, you can compare the, the temperature reconstructions with the instrument-based temperatures and, and see how, how well um, the, re the, 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 re the reconstructions based on the archives, how well they represent the entire region. So these, these little light blue um, bits of curve, they, they represent the average temperature in, a, in the region that represents the box. Um, of the region. Okay, so that is now a different view uh, where hopefully one sees uh, more clearly what is going on. These data are now s standardized um, and binned into 30, into 30 years. And you have all the regions here, Arctic kind of um, oriented north-south roughly, Arctic, Europe, Asia, North America, Australasia and South America and Antarctica. So from zero to 2000. I didn't go be beyond 2000 because many of the data sets um, um, don't reach um, all the way to, to, to present. I mean maybe they were sampled 10 years ago and, and, and so on. So the color coding is, I mean, it's obvi obviously that the warm colors mean warm temperatures, the cold colors mean, mean cold temperatures. And um, now if you, if you squeeze your eyes a bit, or if you're short-sighted like I am, you, you just can remove your glasses and you, you, see, you see a pattern that seems to have warmer temperatures over here in the first millennium and colder temperatures in the, in the, in the second millennium of the common era. Uh, and we can, we can also prove that in numbers. Um, that's the first millennium minus the second millennium. Um, and here we have negative numbers, so a cooling from here to there all, all the way uh, or through all regions where the, temp where the record is long enough. You can also look at this trend by doing a least squares linear regression in all the regions. So everywhere there's, there's a negative trend, except for North America, where we can't say very well. And all the trends are, are, are significant um, to mildly significant. Another thing you can do to, to, to check whether this, this long-term cooling trend over 2,000 years or so um, whether it's, it's, it's significant or, yeah, whether it's significant, um, you can look at the oceans because so far the, the regional groups, they are, they're mostly continental based, um, but there's one group that specifically looks at ocean records. And here I want, want to do a little excursion on how they, they are organized. So I'm, I'm putting up the website here because it's, it's for me, it's an example of how um, a, a future um, a future way of, of, of how working groups can operate. They use all the, um, the, the digital, digital possibilities um, that at least we, we can offer. So they have a nice um, website where um, the, the, the goals and instructions and so on are, are well laid out. They made calls for um, participation through, through list servers, through newsletters, and, and, and so on. So they really involve the community. Um, it started off with a, with a data harvesting exercise from existing databases. And it's quite remarkable that, that so many people have volunteered to do the work, um, to, 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 to skim through databases and, and um, collect the relevant data and put them into, into a metadata base. So about 75 people um, volunteered for that. Then another, a smaller group of 26 people volunteered to do the synthesis, to do really the, 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 the data crunching and so on. And then there, we hear from the pages office and so we do some s support and steering. So now I show um, results from this low resolution group. So they have a high, high resolution group from the ocean where they mostly look at coral data annually resolved. But we want to look at the 2000 years and there's no annually resolved 2000 year record. So you have to rely on low resolution 
which is sediment data. So this is the, the entire set of metadata that was collected um, from, from the oceans by this group, by these 75 plus people. After quality screening and, 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 and check, um, for example, ha how many of those really reach back 2,000 years with high enough resolution, what remains is 44 records uh, with a certain bias in the oceans. Um, nevertheless, 44 high quality to 30 year long ocean surface temperature reconstructions. And if you put them all together, you see a lot of wiggles. Um, actually, you, you, don't, you don't see anything um, <laughs> on this. <laughs> this, is from, this is now 6,000 years, so some go back even more than 2,000 years. Um, these are the original temperatures. These are standardized so that they lie all on top of each other. So what they did then was to, to bin these, the, the, the records of, this, of the last 2,000 years into 200-year um, chunks. And then the picture becomes a bit more clear. So these are the, the binned records so in 200-year steps. And the, this is, these are the same data, the 44 records, in box and whiskers plots. And suddenly, um, you, can, you, you, you find that you, you find the same, the same cooling trend over um, 2,000 years, um, except for the, the last 200 years. There's a lot of ver variability, um, yeah, and it's almost obvious where this comes from. So that seems to be a robust feature, the cooling over 2,000 years. Um, why is that? It's maybe not too surprising in the Northern Hemisphere because the, the geometry of the Earth relative to the Sun um, results in um, a decrease in, in energy from the Sun in, in the Northern Hemisphere in summer. So, because most of these reconstructions are dominated by, by, by summer temperatures, and most of the energy um, is, is received during summer, um, you would actually expect such, such a cooling. Uh, and yet, that's what you see in the Northern Hemisphere. It's a little, little bit more puzzling that also in the Southern Hemisphere, um, you, 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 find, you find this long-term cooling. Because here, actually, in, in summer, in the, in the southern hemisphere, um, the, 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 the trend of, of, the, of the energy from the sun is, is increasing. So it's a bit of an enigma. Um, but there, there is an explanation that goes that basically the oceans, uh, the ocean around, um, well, that, that is um, strongly represented in the southern hemisphere, delays the response of temperature um, to, 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 to insulation. And it, during October in the southern hemisphere, the insulation actually decreases. Um, so with a two-month delay in, in, in temperature response, we c can explain the, 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 the consistent cooling also in the southern hemisphere over several millennia. Good. That would be conclusions about this long-term trend. So most, if not all, regions and the ocean cooled over the duration of the record before the 20th century. And the cooling trend was actually then reversed in all regions except Antarctica. Anyway. I should have stressed that. Um, yeah. I mean, you, you, you see the red colors here um, at, the, at the very end of, of, the, of the record. Um, so after 1900, suddenly the cooling is reversed. Um, all regions, except here, Antarctica, are warming. So, and the reason for this cooling is probably orbitally induced changes in, in, in insulation. Sorry for the X. If I extend the conclusions to some implications, um, then I, c I find two points. One is, if the, well, if the warming back in time um, is continuous, um, then 
the regions must have been warmer than today at some point. So the point being that I mean, we are in a, in a, in a constant discussion with, with climate. Uh, well, people questioning um, whether current climate warming is, 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 is significant. Um, and a cl one claim is that if sometime in the past climate was warmer than today, then there's nothing special about today's warming. Although that is, I mean, it's, it's a false argument. And the and, uh, point here is that at some point in the past, of course, it was warmer. Uh, but the trend we observe, and we, we, can, we can clearly predict that, and it's completely fine. And it has a reason of uh, probably of orbital, orbitally induced um, solar insulation uh, decrease. Another implication is the cooling trend makes the recent warming an even more remarkable feature. So we, we have that cooling and suddenly it stops. So why is that? Well, I think we have an idea. OK, so another observation is about uh, of, these, of these data. Uh, or we can retrieve from the data is about the so-called medieval climate anomaly and the little ice age. There may be a concept that, that is familiar, especially if you look at uh, um, societies um, and, and, and history. We had a whole pages newsletter about the medieval climate anomaly, trying to figure out um, the, the, the pattern globally. Um, underlaying here in this title picture is, is, a, is a very old temperature record. So that's a warm phase around 1100, 1300, 1300 in Europe, and, and a cool phase um, that follows, which is then um, turns the little, the little ice age. Ah, here, I have the big picture. Um, these concepts come from Europe, North America, and uh, often used globally uh, with our records. Now we can, we can check whether they really can be used globally. Um, the answer is no. Um, certainly not for the medieval climate anomaly. Um, that where we would look for a, a, a consistent warming globally. But regions are, are very heter heterogeneous in that respect. So in the, in the, in the northern hemisphere, there's an, there's an early warmish phase around 830 to 1100. Whereas in the southern hemisphere, in Australasia and South America, uh, there's a warm phase clearly much later than, than in the northern hemisphere. And on Antarctica, again, Antarctica does a whole, a whole different thing. Um, there's no such warm phase at all. You can draw a box here in the, in the, in the, um, over the, the 17th to, to the 19th century of, of a generally cool period. But if you try to, to fix boundaries to a little ice age, let's say, with the blue colors, we, 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 we tried that. But there's no, there's no clear answer. So again, um, the regional, the, the, the temperature hi history between regions is so un ununiform, no, what is it, um, heterogeneous, that we cannot identify a little ice age cooling either. As an, that's an attempt to um, explain the, 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 these, these temperature anomalies over the centennial, over, over centuries. Um, the, the cool temperatures here and the warmer-ish temperatures there. Simply that the cool temperatures over the last few centuries was pro had probably to do with higher volcanic um, activity and and some solar lows. So together, they um, they shifted the energy balance uh, that way. That many regions uh, globally did cool but not to the extent as we see today. And that's what we should look at next. The first time conclusions about the century scale anomalies. There's no globally warm or cold intervals that define a worldwide medieval climate anomaly or little ice age. And the implications are that the variability between regions and between hemispheres can be substantial and occur superimposed on longer term trends.
So finally, um, so what is what? How can we assess the last century and last decades temperature um, record in the context of of of, of the longer term past? Um, if you compare the last century here, this this thin box, with the previous coldish centuries. Then we find that the last century was way warmer in all regions except for Antarctica. Uh, so it was warmer by a third of a degree to, to, to more than one degree. So that's what I mentioned earlier as, as this, this reversal of, of the cooling trend. It's quite remarkable. If you look at only the, 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 the previous 30-year periods, 1970 to 2000. There are several regions where within their records there was no uh, warmer 30-year period. And the, in the Arctic, in Asia, in Australasia. There are some regions where there was actually a, a, a warmer 30-year period sometime in the record. So um, it's the, uh, the data show that sometimes the current warming seems to be not unprecedented um, in, in the historical record. And we can also look at that if we, if, if we now dare to, to produce a global average of all these, all these regional curves, uh, uh, a global aver average then um, with, again, some box and whiskers Lot with uncertainties, then that, that is the record. And again, you, you, you can decide whether um, 2000, um, the, the, the last decade, no, the last 30 year period, um, was the warmest or not. It's actually relatively irrelevant, it's, it's more symbolic. But if you really want, if you're after um, record temperatures, um, we could just add the, 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 the last decade. Oh, hold on. Right. Because that's what happened over the last decade. So um, there was warming of several tens of degrees. And with that um, average temperature between 2001 and 2011, we're definitely above um, the global temperature over the, over the last uh, 2,000 years. So, conclusion. These 30 years were the warmest 30 year period. Um, some region experienced 30 year periods that were warmer. But the implications are that the warming over the last few decades was substantial, but not unprecedented in several of the regions. However, the coherency of warming across all the regions except Antarctica, that is unique. You should emphasize really that, that, that point. There's, that there's no 30-year um, period where almost all regions warmed synchronously, synchronously. So that is unprecedented. OK, so then the conclusions in, in uh, overview again. Most, if not all, regions and the ocean cooled over the duration of the record before the 20th century. This long-term cooling trend. The cooling trend was reversed in all regions except Antarctica. So Antarctica is doing its own thing. It's shielded by, by a, a large ocean. But orbitally induced changes in insulation are the likely driver. So we can explain this, this cooling. And I think we can also explain the warming uh, in, the 19, in the 20th century. No globally synchronous warm or cold intervals that define a worldwide medieval cli climate anomaly or little ice age uh, were detected. And the last 30 years were the warmest 30 year periods. Um, while some regions experienced 30 year periods that were warmer. So that's as far as we got for now, 
Um, it's, it's an ongoing project, as I, as I said. And the, the next steps will be that we um, abandon these regional average temperature um, records and really going in, into, the, into, the, into the spatial sphere. That we can really basically have, have maps of temperature change um, evolving through time. And that is then something that can be really even better be used for, for, for comparison with how society, societies um, respond. Um, what we also plan to do, because actually temperature is, is nice to have, but it's, it's, it's not so societally and ecologically relevant in, in, in many places. What we want is precipitation. It's a, bit, it's a bit harder because the spatial heterogeneity is, is, is larger, but that's also nevertheless the one, one, of, one of the next steps. So stay tuned. And I think that's all I have. Yes, thank you.